AutoCAD 2012 is not substantially different than AutoCAD 2011. However, it is substantially different if you're migrating from an earlier version prior to 2009 or have never used it before. The idea behind the AutoCAD environment is that it begins with the letter A up at the very top. Uh, pressing on the letter A, left mouse clicking, gives you the ability to open new drawings uh, or excuse me, open existing drawings, create new drawings, save, and one of the nice features is that you can also now export into PDF files, and that's been around for a few releases, but it is a nice feature to be able to send a client a PDF as opposed to an actual drawing or a paper sheet. Across the top you also have undos, redos, you also have all the ribbon options here. The home ribbon is by far the most useful that you're going to use significantly, followed second by annotate, which is all the dimensioning and leaders uh, that you can do. Uh, the insert is for blocks and migrating different blocks and external references. Uh, other tools where you can copy objects from one drawing to another to make that easier so you don't have to recreate the same drawing over and over. Express Tools is one of the items that you may want to explore a little bit farther, uh, especially like different text options and uh, some of these like a break line symbol if you're doing a lot of breaks in a drawing, uh, showing how parts are broken or surfaces are broken, whether it's in architectural or mechanical, um, it's really nice to have a really neat break line symbol. We're going to go back to home and we're going to begin by looking at the screen. Up in the top right hand side we have the view cube. This is primarily used for 3D so we're not going to discover this particular uh, tool anytime soon uh, within our video series for AutoCAD. The green line is Y. There's a red line across the bottom which you can barely see that appears. That's the X and the Y and where they come together is the zero zero location of our uh, drawing environment. You don't have to begin at zero zero. That's one of the fallacies uh, about CAD drawings that you have to start at zero zero. No you don't. You can start anywhere you want on the sheet. You can always move the object to a specific location if, you, if it needs to be specifically at a coordinate position. Models and layouts. Model is for drawing, layouts is for printing. We'll get to those a little bit later. Uh, the command prompt line, uh, this gives you the information on uh, what the software is looking for, what the input is required. Uh, this is uh, live updates. If you click on it, you can also look at the history also. Across the bottom is where you get a lot of your feedback from your drawing. Starting in the corner, we've got drawing coordinates on the left-hand side. As we move over, we have a series of buttons. These are buttons that are going to help you create your drawing. We'll be selecting several of these during our setup process for our basic drawing. Um, the first few buttons over here towards the right are, are for uh, layouts. So we can switch from a model to a layout. Um, we also have scaling. It's called the annotation scale. This is for dimension purposes. If you want your scale to conform to specific requirements uh, for printing, you can set up annotation scales. Uh, there's other features down here at the bottom in terms of uh, layouts and screen positions. All right, so where do we get started? The four steps that we're going to be setting up here are units, polar, object snap, layers. Those are the four key items that we need to set up before we even begin drawing. Because when you start with AutoCAD it's like, oh well I'll just start drawing some lines. But there are some underlying setup items that you want to make sure that you accomplish. Again, units, polar, object snap, layers. So starting with the with the units command. I know it's kind of odd but the units command is under drawing utilities that's under the big letter A and it allows us to set up what our drawing units is going to look like it this is not our dimensioning units this is just for our drawing environment and I always set up the units so that way 
uh, you get a clear focus on what you're creating. Well, early on in the video, you saw, as the video began, you saw our drawing that we're going to be creating. And it's in inches. And so when we deal with drawing units, we have different types of linear units, whether they're decimal, and those can be English or metric, so it can be millimeters or inches. Architectural, which is in feet and inches, so when I select that, it comes up as a feet and a fractional inch. Engineering, which is feet and decimal inches. That's different than civil engineering, which is feet and decimal feet. So that's a slight difference from the norm of civil engineering. And then fractional and scientific. Uh, scientific is unique because, of course, you've got exponential notation. So if you're drawing something extremely large or extremely small, that would be the drawing unit of choice. And then fractional is similar to architecture, but it's just inches with fractions. We're going to choose decimal, and we're going to set our precision to two decimal places, which was the same setting that we had uh, on our original drawing. Angle measurements, we also have the ability to set up different angular designs. Uh, we can go back to the uh, old school of degrees, minutes, seconds, uh, which is the old school as opposed to our current uh, version of laying out angles using decimal degrees. If you've had trigonometry, gradients and radians, your friends from trig can also be utilized to lay out portions of a circle. And then we have surveyor's units directly focused towards civil engineering, where you've got a bearing and then you've got degrees, minutes, seconds associated with it. So the bearing north of east, and then you've got degrees, minutes, seconds. So it could be north 30 degrees, 20 minutes, 15 seconds east, and that provides you a specific direction uh, that you're going to have that angle at. We'll choose decimal degrees since our drawing is an English-based drawing. Uh, insertion scales and lighting. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about insertion scales and lighting. Insertion scales get invoked when you try to convert or, cr or create a drawing from somebody else's work. Or if you've created other drawings that were metric and you need to bring them into an English drawing or vice versa, ha setting up the insertion scale uh, makes it easier for the software to automatically scale properly the inserted object. And then lighting, when we get into when, they're, when you're dealing with 3D and rendering you have different lighting standards that you can set up and utilize. So those are the basic drawing units. At the bottom you may have noticed that there's a direction button. Now when when we go through mathematics, we always have zero is to the right-hand side of the XY uh, layout. That's basic coordinate position. It's known as east. However, uh, excuse me, and then to go positive 90, we actually work counterclockwise from that right hand or east location. When we deal with mapping or other types of drawings that don't conform to the basic mathematic standard uh, of position, what will happen is that north becomes zero and the positive 90 is clockwise. So in mapping purposes, when you look at a compass, the compass is 0 and 360. So if you look at m true maps like aviation maps, uh, boating maps, uh, hiking and um, mountaineering maps, those are all specified as north being 0 degrees. A uh, little bit different and this direction allows you to create or have AutoCAD create those types of drawings also. So the point being is that it's a totally flexible drawing environment. We'll choose OK at the bottom. Our second setup item is Polar. Polar is found on the very bottom row. It's one of the blue buttons. We'll right mouse click on the Polar button and we can preset our Polar settings. This is 90, 45, 30. And what the Polar allows us to do is preset 
angles that we can draw lines at. Now typically when I do a polar setup I'll either use the settings uh, option initially or if I know that I'm not going to be drawing anything dramatically uh, unique that it's going to be more linear uh, structured on a five degree basis I can go ahead and choose the five degree option immediately. For our initial setup, let's choose the settings dot 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 ellipse is what that dot 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 is called. And that brings up a dialog box. So polar tracking is set up. Our current increment angle is 90. That only means that what that means is that we can draw lines horizontally and vertically, and that's it. No angles in between. I typically like to set mine up at five degrees. No matter what. If I'm just drawing horizontal vertical lines, I'll still set it up at five degrees just by habit. Now what if I wanted to draw a angle other than in five degree increments? So instead of 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, I wanted to draw 21 degrees or 22 degrees or 22 and a half, which would be a common architectural design. I'll have to check additional angles, hit new, and type in 22.5. And that will give me the angle setting. Now remember when we did units, we set up our angle settings to be whole degrees. So theoretically, it's going to be 22 or 23. It's not going to be accurate. Excuse me. It'll be extremely accurate. It'll still draw a 22 and a half. However, the dimensions and it will display is 22 or 23 degrees. Uh, it, it will physically draw it at 22 and a half degrees. However, it will dis be displayed as a whole angle value. It's so one of the things you have to watch is the level of accuracy. So now technically I'm going to add an additional level of accuracy here. I should go back to the units command where I just came from and increase my angle accuracy to reflect this. When you use object snap tracking, orthogonal means that it only shows horizontal vertical whereas all polar angles shows all the angles when you use the object snap tracking. Angle measurement is absolute or relative. Absolute means that it's always based from zero. Relative means that it's based from the last angle. There's going to be drawings that you create that'll have internal angles. Well the internal angles are going to be relative to the last segment so you want to select that check mark. And you can do this on the fly in the middle of a drawing. You don't have to set this up in the beginning and, and follow this rule. I could be in the middle of creating the drawing and say, ah, oh, well, there's an angle that I need to do relative. I'll pop up this particular dialog and uh, apply those settings. Object snap is our third setup item. Now, when we do object snap, what we're doing is we're presetting object or geometric selection options to help us in our drawing. Now these geometric selection options, pretty basic in most cases, however some of them could be a little bit more uh, advanced that you're not going to use significantly but are available to you. Endpoint, that's a, key, that's a core one. Endpoints of lines, arcs, locations. Midpoint, I like midpoint. Um, the midpoint selection allows me to pick the middle of a line uh, or uh, location center. I chose center as opposed uh, to tangent which is the opposite. Both of them use the outer edge of an arc or, or a um, circle for their selection. However, by selecting that outer edge I can also invoke a tangent option. Uh, and so keeping it simple, select either or and if we need to draw a tangent, there's a pop-up way we can bring the tangent up to draw that. And you'll learn that in one of my later, uh, more advanced geometric construction videos. 